Welcome aboard, sailors. Today in activity 2.3, we're going to introduce you to the ideas of utopia, dystopia, and introduce you to a story called Paris and Bergeron. But first, we need to go over some vocabulary. So please record the following vocab terms that you'll see using Cornell notes. Now remember, blue notebook means that you will write everything you see on the screen. First one word we have is utopia, an ideal or perfect society or community. The next word would be dystopia, a community or a society that has great suffering or injustice, basically the opposite of a utopia. So again, a utopia is a perfect society, and a dystopia is the worst society. So when we're talking about utopia, we, we have these like lovely images to take it back here for a second, where mm -hmm. we have these societies looking just wonderful, everything seems great, often they're high tech, but not always a utopia could be very low tech if somebody loved that. But then a dystopia is where everything has gone wrong. So if you've seen like the Hunger Games, they live in a very dystopian society because they have that big huge capital that looks all nice, but it's built on all the misery of all the outside districts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a s series of pictures, and we want you to write in your notebook whether each picture that you see looks like something that you would think of as a utopia or whether it looks like a dystopia. So each picture is going to have a number on it, so write the number down and then write utopia or dystopia. Here's picture number one. Is this a utopia or a dystopia? Does this look like the best society or the worst society? Do those people look like they're suffering great injustice, or do they look like they have a wonderful life ahead of them? Hmm. Number two and number three. Utopian or dystopian? The best society or just the worst society? This should be an interesting one. <laughs> do you want to be here right now? <laughs> Oh yeah, much better. The best society or the Four. worst society? How about that? Which would you rather be in? Here, let me give you a hint. Look at the picture. <laughs> All right, jokes aside, think carefully about each of those images we just saw and like which ones make you feel like they're a place you would want to be in or which are a place you would want to run away from because one last note we have is this image in number seven. Do these people look like someone in a utopia, or do these images look like somebody from a dystopia? All right, I think we've had time to get that down. Let's actually go back and take a look back at your society. So what I want you to do now is reflect back on the society you created at the beginning of the unit when we did that big My Society project, and you came up with what you thought was the perfect society. And I want you to think really carefully about what you wrote there. Do you think that you made something that was more like a utopia, or something that was more like a dystopia. Um, you might want to look at individual choices that you made because there might be some things where you're like, this is very dystopian, but there might be other things where you're like, this was a pretty utopian decision that I made here. Um, so look at each individual box to try to make those decisions. Go ahead and pause the video now and finish with this sentence frame where you just tell me that your society is more like a utopia or a dystopia and give us a one or two reasons why. You don't have to spend a ton of time on this, but we do want you to think about it. All right, so next up, we're going to go ahead and read Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut. So in this image, uh, you will see this making a lot more sense once we read through the story, but you see this guy who is just dragged down by all these radios, and he's got all this junk on him, and you see a ballerina who also has just a bunch of stuff all over her that makes it hard for her to dance and do her job, and we're going to see what that's all about. But first, we want to introduce you to a few terms. The first term is sash weights and bird shot. Um, we've got some pictures of that here. Um, you can tell that all of these, they look pretty darn heavy and they're made of various kinds of metal. Um, and this idea that like this bag right here is full of a bunch of these little guys in there. So, you know, a few of those is gonna be not so bad, but an entire bag full is probably gonna get pretty heavy. So these are weights and keep that in mind as you read the story. Yeah, so when it says sash weights and birdshot, just keep in mind it's something heavy. And with the sash weights, they look like those big old cylinders so they can hang off of people. 
Next up, we're talking about a 21 gun salute. This will be mentioned in the story. So this is when guns are shot in the air to show respect. It's often at military funeral services. Um, police funeral services do this as well. Um, and just you have a set of people, seven people shoot a gun into an air three times. So it's 21 guns is the idea. Um, it is extremely loud and the bullets losing, leaving the gun create like an impact of air around the gun that makes it even louder than what it would be if it was just a noise um, and all of that going on at the same time and usually people that are around this need to wear like ear protection and things like that so it's an extremely loud experience. Uh, next up will be mentioned in the story is Thor, um, the Norse god of thunder. This is the same Thor that the Marvel character is based on so we've got him there in the center but it's not just specifically him when it talks about you know mighty Thor it's talking about this idea of a big uh, incredibly handsome, like, god of thunder. So keep that in mind when his name gets mentioned. And then this idea of handicapping, um, and that is to get in the way of something or make it difficult. For example, um, if something was too easy for someone, they could say handicap themselves by trying to um, tie one arm behind their back. So somebody's saying, like, this is so easy, I could do it with one arm tied behind my back. Yeah, um, this shows up a lot in sports when one player is really good at something and the other player may not be as good, so they'll attach some kind of a score penalty to one player to make it more of a fair game between the two of them. So, now that we've gone over some pre-reading stuff, we need to open up Springboard Online and show you how to access what we are reading today. So, you've got the five steps on the screen here that you need to follow, and we're going to show you exactly what they look like in the video in just a moment. So, the first thing you need to do is go to Google Classroom in another tab and click Springboard Online under the Important Links or Useful Links. And once you do that, log in with Clever. So, we'll show you what that looks like right now. So, go into Useful Links or Important Links, hit Springboard Online, and click this link right here. And once you do so, it's going to take you to a screen where you have an opportunity to log in with Clever. Make sure you do that. You'll just have to hit log in with Google one more time after. Then once it finally loads in, you're going to have a bunch of options. Now it won't be as many options as you see on the screen right now because this is the teacher version, but this one looks exactly the same. You're going to hit the one that says 1.0 eBooks. And once you hit 1.0 eBooks, again, you will have less options than you see on the screen right now, but you then select the grade 8 book. Make sure it is not the one that says ELD in the corner. A lot of you will be able to see the one that says ELD in the corner. Do not pick that one. Pick the one that has no ELD in the corner. It says grade 8. It'll look like a bunch of ice. And then this is the part that a lot of people ask questions about, so pay close attention. Once you click the book, it's going to open up the book, but a lot of you are going to be very confused about how you get what you're supposed to get. So you click over here, there's the table of contents. It's got three dots and three lines. You click that, then you open up unit two, because that's the unit we're in, so you click unit two, and it'll drop down again. And then you scroll to activity 2.3. As we use the book more and more often, it'll be really important that you navigate this correctly. So anything that's 2 point anything will be a part of unit 2. So make sure that you just drop down unit 2 from the table of contents to access activity 2.3. Once there, you'll be able to scroll down just a little bit. You can read about Utopia if you really want to. And access the story of Harrison Bergeron. We would heavily encourage you to actually listen along in your headphones as you read so that you can read the story and listen to it. They have audio for you here that you can use to get through the story. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but it is an option. So again, those steps are to go to Google Classroom, click the link, log in with Clever, click eBooks 1.0, and click the 8th grade book, and then use the table of contents to get to Activity 2.3, where we then need you to read or listen to Harrison Bergeron. Go ahead and pause this video and do all of that in another tab now, and come back here once you finish the story. Alright, so welcome back from reading Harrison Bergeron. We hope that you all enjoyed the story. Maybe you were shocked, maybe you were <laughs> surprised. Um, we're going to do some text-dependent questions. That means we're going to answer some questions that use the text, and you must have the text and understand the text in order to be able to answer them. Um, we want you to ace these, and we've laid that out very clearly here for you. The first one is, what is George's little mental handicap radio, and what is it intended to do? Now, if you don't remember where uh, that information is, you can go back to your springboard online, and you can find that on paragraph three. And um, your answer, you can use these sentence frames. So you can literally write in your notebook, the mental handicap radio is, answer the question, 
and its purpose is answer that question. Then for the C, you say the text states that, and go find some information in paragraph 3 that will prove that your answer is true, following that up with the E, the explanation, where you say the radio keep, is keeps its sameness in this society by, then explain how the radio keeps sameness in this society. We'll go ahead and get rid of that is real quick. Radio keeps sameness in this society by, and explain how that radio fulfills its role. Let's go ahead and pause the video now and take care of this question. All right, Sailor. Moving on to our next one. Why is the punishment for removing weight from the handicap bag so harsh? You can find the answer to this in paragraphs 28 through 32. Uh, the answer here is the punishment for removing the weight from the handicap bag is so harsh because, and then you answer the question, find us a quote from the text in paragraphs 28 through 32, and then put that where it says the text states that, and in quotation marks and with a paragraph number where it says source, Tell us where that information came from. And for the explanation, if there was no punishment, what might happen? So tell us what might happen if there was no punishment, what the society might look like. Let's go ahead and pause the video now and take care of this question. And our third text-dependent question is, according to the society, what are the things that make George and his son and people like the ballerinas so dangerous? You can find the answer to this on paragraph 41. Um, and the answer is going to be what makes George Harrison and the ballerinas so dangerous is the text describe them as, and your source, which is your paragraph citation, and this means they are dangerous because, and you answer. All right. Welcome back, Sailor. Moving forward. Now what we're going to do is summarize the story. So please take a moment to copy this graphic organizer into your notebook. Make sure you have plenty of space in each box. And you are going to write us a full and complete summary of what happened in Harrison Bergeron. So where it says overview statement, you're going to write us big picture just in one sentence what happened in the story. Then one piece, one event at a time you are going to tell us the most important events. So you need to choose the most important four things that happened in the story and list them in order. So it'll say first, and then tell us what happened first in the story that was really important. Then you will say next, and you'll tell us what happened next in the story. Then you'll say then, the third part, and then finally will be the ending of the story. So everyone's ending should honestly look very, very similar for this. The most important uh, event at the end of the story is extremely clear. You might choose mildly different events leading up to it, but then remember the overview statement is just in one sentence, what is this story? What is it about? So take the time to fill out this graphic organizer on your own, pause the video now, come back and hit play once you're finished. Okay, we are now going to be working on a second graphic organizer. And this one is going to talk more about the theme and the ideas behind the story than the events of the story itself. Um, so our graphic organizer here is have two parts and it's gonna talk about the interpretation of the story and then the evidence in the story that support our interpretation. So copy this graphic organizer into your notebook and we are going to go step by step and fill it out together. While you're copying it, I do want to actually fill you in on a couple things. So when we're looking at the interpretation steps, we're going to give you those because we want to help you start thinking about this idea of a dystopia. We want to start giving you food for thought there. But for the evidence, we're going to actually ask you to go back into the text and find evidence yourself to support all this. So we will be doing interpretation together, but you will need to go find your own evidence to support the interpretations we give you. So pause the video now if you haven't completed the graphic organizer yet and wrap that up. All right, Sailor, now that you have a graphic organizer with plenty of room to write in, let's get started with A. <clears throat> what ideal is this society based upon? Well, this society is based on the ideal of equality. It's really important to everybody in this story that everyone is the same. Yeah, anybody who is exceptional or different, they need to be kind of pushed down. Their abilities need to be made worse so that nobody feels bad about themselves and everybody is on equal footing. What we want you to do now is go ahead and go back into the text, and we want you to find one sentence that supports this. So find one sentence that supports it, write it where it says evidence, and give us a paragraph number where that sentence came from. Our next question is, what did the society sacrifice in order to create this ideal life? 
<clears throat> so the interpretation we had on this is that they sacrifice individual differences, their freedom, individual expression, and individual achievement. Basically everything about strong individualism had to go away. People who are exceptional on their own can't be exceptional anymore. And they had to give up a lot of freedom too because they have these police that'll show up and shoot you if you just show off how exceptional you are. Yeah. Not allowed to be cute, not allowed to be pretty, not allowed to be smart, not allowed to have talents. Nothing special about anyone, but hey, everybody's the same. So for C, we ask, how was this utopian ideal transformed into a dystopian reality? So if we said to you, what if we had a society where everyone was equal? That's a very utopian idea. But it became this dystopian reality where police are shooting people on live television and everyone is wearing all this horrific technology. And the reason it became that is because of how they went about creating their attempted utopia. So they made everyone lower instead of raising everyone up. If they had said, hey, let's find a way to take all the bad stuff out and make everybody great, then we'd have our utopia. But instead what they did is found a way to take all the great stuff out and make it really low and bring it all down. And so now we have a dystopia. Yep, they decided that equality meant that nobody feels bad about themselves and that everybody just gets to be exactly the same. So that for them is what they chose equality to mean. And it became a pretty miserable place to live in as a result. What new problems were created? So once they decided that everyone was going to be equal, a society in which no citizen was allowed to be unique or live up to their his or her potential is what came out as a result. Nobody gets to be exceptional. Nobody gets to be themselves. Nobody gets to be incredible. And so the society loses out on all of the great things that these people could do. So if you have not already, make sure that you go and you find evidence to support each of these interpretations. We do want you to write these interpretations down exactly how they are here. And later on, you're going to use a very similar graphic organizer, except we're going to make you do it on your own. So make sure that you understand these concepts and have this in your notebook as a reference point. Get to work, sailors.